Okay, um, let's do a few factoring problems. So directions for quite a while in this chapter are just going to say factor. Okay, um, the first problem that I want us to try is this one right here. 5x to the fifth plus 10x cubed. Okay. And what we're looking for, remember the first thing that we're always looking for when we're factoring, here's our factoring flow diagram again. First question that we ask is, is there a greatest common factor? And in this problem there is. Remember a greatest common factor is basically the largest thing, the largest factor that either of these terms will share in common. So you have to think about the numbers and the variables separately. So if I think about the numbers 5 and 10, they actually share 5 as a factor. Um, so I'm going to pull out a 5, and what I'm going to do is write that on the outside of a parentheses. Um, and, and this is called factoring it out. Okay, if I look at the variables, I've got an x to the 5th and an x to the 3rd. The biggest thing that they share in common there would be an x to the 3rd. Because remember, in an x to the 5th, there's 3 x's and then an additional 2 x's. Because there's 5 of them. Okay, so I would actually pull out... 5x to the third power. That's a great. That's the greatest common factor in this problem. Okay. Now, one of whatever I'm going to put on the inside of these parentheses, I'm going to think about um, what do I need to put here in order to get this factor back when I multiply. So remember that factoring is undoing multiplication, right? So the five times basically, if I had a one, would give me the five back. And if I use my exponent rules that you learned in chapter 4 in Math 96, um, you have to think about x to what power would give me a 5 here when I add it to the 3. So you know that 3 plus 2 is going to give you a 5. So if I were to multiply these, 5x cubed times 1x squared, that would give me that 5x to the fifth power. Okay, The 10x cubed, I need 5 times something in order to get 10 back. It would have to be a 2. And then I need x cubed times something in order to get x cubed back. There's already an x cubed there, so I don't need any x's right here. Okay, so that would be your factorization for that problem. Um, let's try another one like that. This is 8y cubed minus 20y squared plus 12y and then minus 16. Okay, if you look at every term, there's four terms here. This is one, two, three, and four terms. Every term in the problem, um, you want to look at what do they share, what's the biggest thing that they all share in common. Well, you'll notice that these three have y's, but this one doesn't have a y. So there is no variable that's going to be common to all of them. They do all have a common factor, though, um, in terms of the numbers. So if you think of 8, 20, 12 and 16, the largest number that they all share in common is a 4. So that's going to be our greatest common factor here. I would take out the 4, write it on the outside of my parentheses, and then I want to think about what do I multiply, what would I need here, so that when I multiply 4 by it, I get 8y cubed back. Okay, so I need a 2y cubed. To get negative 20y squared back, I would need a negative 5y squared. To get positive 12y back, I would need a positive 3y, because 4 times 3y would give me 12y, and then minus 4, because 4 times negative 4 would give me the negative 16. Okay? All right. Let's take a look at a problem like this. Um, if you have x squared times this quantity, x plus 3, plus 2 times a quantity, x plus 3. Okay, this problem is a little bit different. Um, you can see here that there is actually a greatest common factor. It just turns out that the greatest common factor here is actually a binomial. x plus 3 is what these two terms share in common. And I guess I should point that out, that there's only two terms in this problem. There's this term right here, because there's a product between these two. So this whole thing is one term, and this is one term. Okay. Between those two, they share a greatest common factor of an x plus 3. 
Okay, I fondly refer to it as the magic. Um, and <clears throat> what's going to happen here is if I pull out the x plus 3, you want to think about what am I left with in order to get these things back. Well, for this term right here, I would be left with an x squared. For this term here, I would be left with a plus 2. Okay, now sometimes this is confusing to people, so let me show you that this is actually the same thing as if I just had some other variable in there. So maybe, um, let's say I asked you to factor x squared y plus 2y. Now you can't really see the other color here. But anyways, um, do you see that in this factorization right here, if if you look at those two, the greatest common factor is a y. Okay, so you would take the y out and you would say I'm left with an x squared and then right here a plus 2. This is exactly the same as this problem, it's just that the y in this problem up here is the whole x plus 3. So if you think of this as just being one thing, if that was like a y and you know this was like a y, it's exactly the same problem. Okay, so you might want to sit with that a little bit and see if you can understand that piece of it. Okay, and quickly, one more problem because the, the whole application of that last problem was be, to be able to factor by grouping. Okay, so factoring by grouping, when you have four terms, back to the factoring flow diagram, notice how many terms are there if there's four terms, this process of grouping. Um, so let's say we have 10x cubed minus 25x squared plus 4x and then minus 10. The process of grouping is basically to take the first two terms and factor out the greatest common factor and then the second two terms and factor out the greatest common factor. Okay. Um, it turns out that if you look through this whole problem there isn't a GCF in the entire problem. right? But if I look within the grouping, I can see that there's actually in this first grouping, there's a GCF of a 5 and also an x squared. Okay, So if I take that out of this grouping, I'm going to get, I'm going to be left with a 2x and then minus 5. Okay, Right here, if I notice that the greatest common factor between those is a 2, I would take that out and I would be left with a 2x and then a minus 5. Okay, notice the magic, right? 2x minus 5 and 2x minus 5. We now have a greatest common factor where we didn't before. So I'm going to take out that greatest common factor now. That's a 2x minus 5. And I'm left with here 5x squared to get this back and a plus 2 there to get that back. Okay, the one thing to be aware of when you're doing um, factoring by grouping is if your leading term is negative in your second grouping, if this one is negative, oops, if this one is negative, you need to pull the negative out, otherwise you won't see the magic. Okay, so let's see if I can quickly, and this video might run over, so I think actually I'll stop it and maybe I'll do another video of something like that. Okay, bye.